I mentioned earlier that work is done to stretch or compress a spring. Now we're going to develop the actual formula for the work done in stretching or compressing a spring, and we're going to equate that with the potential energy that's stored in the spring. A spring presents us with a challenge for finding this formula, because the force is not constant with displacement. As you stretch a spring, the force that the spring applies, the force that you have to apply to the spring, becomes greater and greater. So here's how we're going to figure out what work is done in that particular case. The force is directly proportional to the displacement. So F equals minus Kx is the force applied by the spring. The force that you have to apply to the spring to do work on the spring is going to be positive Kx. K being the spring constant is a property of that particular spring. X being the displacement from the equilibrium length, be it positive or negative. Positive usually means that you're stretching the spring. Negative usually means that you're compressing the spring. So we'll develop the formula in this way. First, I'll make a graph of force versus displacement. This is just graphing what Hooke's law tells us, that when the spring is displaced from equilibrium, so the horizontal axis here is the distortion x, then the vertical axis is the force that you have to apply to displace the spring. If you want to displace the spring by a distance, a distortion x, the force you have to apply to hold it there is kx. The slope of this line is k, the spring constant. If we think of a very small displacement somewhere along this line, stretching it from some displacement to a little bit bigger displacement, the work done is just the force that you have to apply against the spring times the small displacement that you did. As you stretch it, the force gets bigger and bigger, but if we consider a small enough slice, the force stays fairly constant over that displacement. So then we can conceptually add together those tiny pieces of work as we gradually stretch the spring out. What we end up with is the area under that curve being the work required. What is the area? The area is the area of that triangle, which is half the area of the rectangle, which has one side of length kx and the other side of length x. So half of that, kx times x, is one half kx squared. Notice that when we're doing this, it's x dot x. When we dot a vector with itself, the dot product is a scalar whose value is the square of the magnitude of the vector. Notice that this doesn't matter whether x is positive or negative. So to distort a spring, it requires work. It requires work to stretch it or to compress it. You have to pull it in the direction that you're trying to distort the spring. Notice that this value, 1 half kx squared, is positive for positive distortions x, also for negative distortions. Either way, positive work is required to do that distortion. To further distort a spring, you have to push it or pull it in the direction that you're distorting it. The spring is going to resist you. To either stretch or compress a spring, you have to apply a force in the direction that you're moving. Naturally, the formula for the potential energy stored in a spring is equivalent to the formula for the work done to distort the spring capital U is often our generic symbol used to denote potential energy, is just one-half kx squared. So a distorted spring stores that energy, and the stored energy is proportional to the square of the distortion. 